A hotspot that'll work anywhere in the world? Let's have a closer look. If you travel overseas, you know that getting online in different countries can be quite a pain. It ends up being pretty tricky to figure out all the different online programs and maybe going to a Wi-Fi or internet cafe and not being sure about security. So if you are a world traveler or if you're in the service, we'll come back to that, then this is going to be your best friend. This is the Sapphire Touch International Mobile Hotspot. And this thing is really nice. As you can see, it's kind of the bit thicker, but general size of an old school cell phone. But this offers you a lot of capabilities. Specifically, it works with, you ready for this? WCDMA, LTD, FDD, LTD, TDD, and GSM. So that covers the really significant percentage of the world. It works as a 4G LTE hotspot, and its maximum theoretical downward down speed is 150 megabits a second, and maximum up is 50 megabits a second. I actually ran some tests at different places, so we'll come back to those numbers. It also includes a 3500 milliamp power battery, which means that you can run this for a day or two, or you can actually use the USB port on the bottom and charge something like your smartphone, right? So if you're running out of juice, this thing can help you in a pinch. That's pretty handy. It also supports up to five devices being connected simultaneously. Obviously, the more devices you connect, the slower it's going to be per device. But you know what? If you're getting a good 4G connection, this is actually going to be pretty good. Uh, when you buy the unit, it comes with 500 meg of data, but of course you're going to end up having to buy data plans or there's a pay-as-you-go program, or you can even drop in a SIM or two as you travel if you want to use the dual SIM system that they have in this. So that's pretty cool. But let's talk about how you use this. So one of the things is that there's a smartphone app for either Android or iPhones, and that's called Sapphire. Fire MiFi. And here's a couple of quick sample screens so you can see the home screen looks a lot like the home screen on this. Go figure, right? And then the usage history, <laughs> I had to translate, right? So there's a tiny bug they might want to work on. So that 1377286 kilobytes turns out to be 1.34 gigabytes. So I have used over one gig of data off of this. And I will tell you, it's a funny story, is I hooked this up, I got it hooked up and was using it for one of my computers. And then I forgot that's what I was using. So for the entire evening, I was watching videos, I was doing Facebook, I was emailing, I was uploading content. Everything was zipping along so fast that I actually didn't realize I wasn't on my own local Wi-Fi network. So this this was really, really good in terms of its performance, although I did use a fair amount of data. If you're going to use something like this, you probably want to be very careful of thinking through how much data do you need. If you're using this to stream Netflix in 4K, you are going to be really amazed at how much data you can use in a short amount of time. <laughs> Now, as I said, it is a global service. It supports over a hundred countries. Here's a coverage map, right? And they do this through what they call cloud sims. So there are essentially over 2000 preloaded sims that let this device connect locally to a wide variety of different networks and let you access those wireless networks or cellular networks as if you were local there and as if you had purchased a SIM for a data plan in that country. So if you're in Afghanistan, if you're in Libya, if you're in Italy, if you're in South Africa, this thing can get you online. That's pretty cool. Now, I said that there are three different payment programs, so it offers prepaid and prepaid runs about five cents a megabit for a megabyte maybe actually would make more sense. So five cents a megabyte. Um, there's pay as you go and pay as you go. As you can see in this screen capture, you just go and get what you need from within the app. So there's a wide variety of prices and that gets you a fairly large amount of data depending on which country. And so those prices are not vastly out of control. And if you're stuck in somewhere in the Middle East or somewhere in China where all the local options are really expensive, this does not sell suddenly look that expensive as a way for you to get online securely without using any of their telecom infrastructure and then knowing that you're actually a little bit more of a secure connection than if you just walk into the local internet cafe. So 
let's see and then there's the dual sim like I said if you're gonna be like you know in Germany for a month you might just go ahead and get a local German data plan get a sim card and then you can pop the back of this and put it in here so that's actually pretty straightforward too which leads us to so what's the performance like? So anecdotally, I told you that I was online for an entire evening and didn't even realize that's what I was using. I also ran some speed tests. So here's the first speed test I ran, and this was in Colorado. So you can see down was 15.17, and up was a pretty impressive 11.23 megabits a second. And then I went and traveled to California, really just to test this. Everything else was coincidental. So I went to Southern California and I tested this there and I found actually I got even better performance right so I got 20 megabits a second down and 12.5 megabits a second up that's pretty darn good that is plenty 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 enough bandwidth to have a really nice video chat for example right now I will say there were some connectivity hiccups so the first place I tried this in Southern California it just never connected and I do find that it takes a couple of minutes, even after it says it's connected, it takes a couple of minutes to really get onto that system's network and for you to be able to really be able to get to websites and do stuff. So my recommendation is probably turn this on, get it all rolling while that's happening. Go get a cup of coffee or go and grab a beer or something. And then when you come back, you should be good to go. But it's not an instantaneous turn it on, connect, boom, and you're ready to rock and roll. So that's kind of a drag. So let me tell you that you do have to buy the base unit. So I showed you some of the prices for the like pay as you go. And we talked about the price for prepaid, but that re requires you to actually have this device. So before I tell you the price of this unit, which is the Sapphire Touch International Mobile Hotspot, before we get to that price, let me ask if you can go ahead and click on subscribe. Really appreciate when you subscribe to my channel and you get the benefit of keeping up on the vast array of technology and consumer electronics and gizmos and gadgets that show up and that we test. So go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really appreciate when you do that. And if you are stationed overseas, let me know, how are you connecting right now? Are you just using base Wi-Fi, and what's that experience like? Leave a comment, let me know about that. So, all right, so that leaves us with the actual Sapphire Touch International Mobile Hotspot. It is $179 at sapphirego.com. That comes with a little bit of a data set or a you know, little bit of a pay-as-you-go sort of thing, but probably you're gonna wanna go and upgrade and get a better program or a better um, plan, right? But it does get you started. And other than that, like I said, it's, you know, it's, it's a little heavy. It runs Android, but it's kind of a not, not super impressive version of Android, but it's all you need really. The only complaint I will have is when I was charging, it doesn't actually give you like a percentage charged or anything. It basically just shows like a little battery filling up until it's finally full. So I would appreciate, as I was using it, I would have appreciated a little better feedback on that, but it's certainly quite functional and the connectivity is great. And if you're overseas and you wanna be able to get online without relying on anyone else or any other service, then this could be a great solution for you. So I say check it out and I'm gonna go back online, but I'm gonna be a little more thoughtful about what I use before I consume another gig. <laughs> so this is Dave Taylor and I'll catch you in my next video.